Welcome back to another episode of this home automation series using a Raspberry Pi to control your lights, power sockets and many more. Herefore we will use HomeKit and built in BugNet touchscreens. As you guys know there is a lot of software behind this and that is what we are gonna feature next episode so stay tuned for that. In this episode we are gonna feature the hardware behind this project. I want to explain why I did certain things and why I chose high-end reliable hardware instead of some cheap hardware for 5 bucks. So stay tuned, sit back, enjoy, we're gonna straightly dive in. Let's start on the third row. On the left you have my Raspberry Pi mounted on the screw mount unit. Next to it there is a 24 volt power supply that powers my relays and touchscreens. On the right there is an old bugnet controller. The reason I chose for a screw mount unit is fairly simple. The wires you normally use to connect to the GPIO pins of your Raspberry Pi are easy to connect, but also easy to disconnect. That's why I chose for a screw mount unit. Your cable is always secured by a screw and won't easily disconnect. Next to it is my 24 volt power supply. It powers my touchscreens. The power supply is also strong enough to power my extra relays that are capable of switching currents up to 16 amps. Later on I will explain why I need those. On the right you have my old bugnet controller. It used to control my whole house, but as you can see there are no wires connected to it anymore. I maybe see some use in the near future to control or automate some things. On this row we also have a power supply that supplies power to all 16 relays on the green board. The blue relays on the right are the 5 extra relays we talked about earlier. This 24 volt power supply only supplies power to the green relay board. As you can see there is a white and an orange wire going to the relay board. The white wire is the ground and the orange wire is the VCC. This relay board only needs 600 milliamps to work. This relay board is a high active one. So if you switch a 1 on your Raspberry Pi, the relay will turn on. The purple wires are the communication wires. Those communication wires are used to control the state of the relays, on or off. This is done with the GPIO's 3 volt output. As you can see I used brown and orange wires. The orange wires are 24 volts and the brown wires are 230 volts. The brown wires are directly connected to lights in my house. The orange wires are only connected to the relays. The reason I chose those extra 5 relays is because I'm switching a high current with some of my equipment. I'm using the green relay board to switch low currents that will activate these relays. Let's go to the first layer. On the first layer we have some power sockets. Those power sockets are powered by the extra 5 relays. In the middle all the wiring of my house is fed through a screw mount unit. Next to that there is a power socket to feed power to my Raspberry Pi. The 6 extra relays are powering those 6 power sockets. As you can see there are 6 plugs plugged in the power sockets. Those plugs lead to my controllable power supplies. I need those to control the currents through the wiring. Because the wiring is so far away, I needed to be able to adjust the voltage. Because how longer your cable is, how more voltage drop you have. So I chose for an adjustable power supply. My power supply can supply power between 12 volt and 18 volts. The max current output is 30 amps. When I turn one of the power supplies on, it has a power spike. This means the power supply is using its max power capacity for like a split second. This causes your relay to melt a little bit and you won't be able to switch your relay off again. That's why I chose for those heavy duty relays. Because when you divide the max power capacity by 230 volts I'm using, the answer is 10 amps. And the 10 amps is the maximum capacity of the green relay board relays. That's why it sometimes causes to melt the hardware in the relay together. And that is why you won't be able to open or close your relay again. That's why I chose for those heavy duty relays. As you can tell there is a lot of wiring going on in this project. That's why I installed all my wires in a central place. 
all the wiring on top are cables that are coming from lights, power sockets and other equipment I want to control using my software. Screw mount units are very easy to use. You connect your cable on the top of the screw mount unit. On the bottom of the screw mount unit you can connect wiring with the desired length so it reaches the right component. You also can link certain screw mount units so you can create your own live group or your negative group. And you then can connect wires on the bottom to link them through desired relays or desired power sockets you want negative or your live. So you can power adapters, power supplies or other things. As you can see on the left, I have a power socket. In this power socket, I have my Raspberry Pi adapter. This adapter has an output of 5 volts with 3 amps. There are also alternative ways to power your Raspberry Pi. But I simply chose the safest one to power my Raspberry Pi so it won't burn or destroy any component. Now I will show you what happens when I turn one of my power supplies on. As you can see on the top there is a green light going on and off. That means the relay is activated and deactivated. On the bottom there was a screen turning on and off. This was the screen of the power supply of my staircase light. As you can see I easily can turn on and turn off the lights using the HomeKit app. I can also use the Hi Siri command, as you will see. Hi Siri, turn off the lights in the staircase. Hi Siri, turn on the lights in the staircase. As you saw that it was fairly simple, but this is everything behind the scenes. If you turn on a light, a relay goes on, and if it's a light with a power supply behind it, the other relay also will turn on. If you look closely, you see a spark when I turn the relay on. This means the relay was activated. This was everything that had to do with the hardware. In the next episode, we are going to do the software part. So, if you are interested for the software part, stay tuned for that. If you want to create your own home automation panel just like I did, and you want to know what kind of hardware I used or what kind of hardware you need to use, just send me an email or a message. I will reply and I will help you the most. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, subscribe, like, I see you in the next one.